Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at relative frequency. So relative frequency is how we would uh, find a probability from uh, doing an experiment. Um, so when would this be uh, useful? So if I was to say have a bottle and I was to flip it up and try and get it to land on the table upright and I said what's the probab probability of me doing that? There's no real way of knowing. So what we do is we do an experiment, we try it 10 times for example, and then we'd say, okay, if it lands on uh, upright three times, we'd say the relative frequency would be three over 10 because it was successful three times and we did it a total of 10 times. So it's just a way of working out the probability from an experiment, okay? So to make it more accurate, okay, to increase the accuracy, you do it more times. So if I was to do that experiment 100 times, whatever the relative frequency would be would be a much more accurate um, uh, probability than if you were to do it just 10 times. So in exams, quite often they will ask you what um, would increase the accuracy or how would you make this experiment better? Always do it more times. And the final thing to have a look at is this expected frequency. Remember, frequency just means how many. So how many would we expect something to happen? Well, that's just how many times do you want it to happen? And you times that by the relative frequency. So let's go back to my example here. If I had three over 10 times, my relative frequency was three over 10 for flipping my bottle. And I wanted to know how many times uh, that we, if it would land upright if I was to do it, say a thousand times, I would do a thousand times by three over 10. And that would give me how many times I'd expect to get it. It is just an estimate. That's why it's expected, okay? It's what you expect to get. So we'll have a look at a few examples to hopefully uh, make this a bit clearer. So let's get cracking. A biased coin, biased means that it's not fair, is flipped 50 times. If it landed on heads 17 times, what is the relative frequency of it landing on heads the next time the coin is flipped? Okay, so how many times was this successful? Well, it was successful 17 times. And how many times did they have a go at uh, flipping the coin? 50. So quite simply, we would say the relative frequency or the probability of it happening next time is 17 over 50. Okay. So that's looking at the first bit. Let's have a look at some more. So let me get on my next sheet. There we go. So if a dice is thrown 600 times, Estimate the relative frequency of each outcome. So here's the outcomes of rolling the dice. One, two, three, four, five, six. Frequency, how many times they each uh, landed on a one, two, three, four, five, or six. And we need to work out the relative frequency. So remember, it's how many times it happened. So one happened 71 times uh, over 600, which was the total amount of times it happened. Same thing with two, it's 143 over 600 and then 97 over 600, 110 over 600, 88 over 600, and then finally uh, 91 over 600. So there's all the relative frequencies for each of those, not a problem, okay? It says, is the dice then biased? So again, bias means that it's unfair. Well, let's assume the dice is fair. What would be the probability of rolling a one? Well, it would be one out of six. That would be the probability of getting a two, a three, a four, a five, and a six. That's what we'd expect. Okay, but this experiment was done, and this is actually what we had. So let's compare them. If I was to do uh, a fair dice 600 times, Okay, how often would we expect it to land on a 1 or a 2 or a 3 and so on? Well, we'll just do a bit of an equivalent fraction here and times it by 100 to get it over 600 and times that by 100 as well. So if we were to have rolled a fair dice, we would expect to see it um, 100 times rolling a 1, 100 times rolling a 2, 3, 4, 5 and a 6. So when we compare these, not too bad. Being three away, 10 away, you might get away with. You might even have an argument for 12 and nine being away from here. That's not a problem. What you definitely won't have an argument for is this. Okay, if it's expected to be 100, that's 29 below. That's 43 over. These two are far, far 
um, too uh, far too, too far away uh, from the hundred here. Okay, so is this dice biased? Yes, and you can say that because one. Uh, the relative frequency for one and the relative frequency for two are too far away what we'd expect to see, which would be 100 over 600. Okay, so you can also have use it to make an argument like that. Okay, two more examples. Okay, so this is now looking at the expected frequency. So in this example, the probability of a drawing pin landing pin up when dropped is three fifths. So they tell you what the probability is, or they may have already done an experiment, and this is the relative frequency. Either way, we know what we're dealing with. Estimate how many times it will land pin up if dropped 50 times. So this goes back to the third point I made at the start. This is your expected frequency, where we take the probability, okay, or relative frequency, and you times it by how many times you are gonna do it. In this case, we times by 50. So 3 fifths times 50. So we're just finding a fraction of an amount. So 50 divided by five is 10, times by three is 30. Okay, so that will probably be a non-calculator. So if I were to do this experiment 50 times, I'd expect to see it 30 times. What about if it was 84 times? Well, we still do the probability, which is three fifths. We still times it by how many times you want to know, which is 84. And this will be a little bit of a calculator job. So we have, oops, use the old fraction button, make things a bit easier. So three fifths times by 84, and it is a decimal, it's 50. Point four. Now, of course, you can't have 0.4 of a time where it lands pin up. It just doesn't work. So if you notice in the question, it says estimate. So it's just have a good guess. As long as you've shown this working, you would then round it. In this case, it would round down to 50. So in 84 times, I'd expect to see it 50 times. OK, so as it's an estimate, we can just do that running it to the nearest whole number. OK. And last one we're going to have a look at here. Okay, the table below gives the results of someone trying to hit a bullseye on a dartboard. So we have different days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and the weekend. We have the hits and the misses it's for each day. So 3 and 24, 7, 18, and so on. And we're asked, what is the best estimate of hitting the bullseye? Okay, so with this, okay, the first thing to do is to work out the total, because if we're going to work out the relative frequency, we need to know the total. So 3 add 24 is obviously 27, so they've had to go 27 times there. Uh, 7 add 18 is 25. Uh, 5 add 26, 31. 0 add 5 is obviously 5. 8 add 20 is 28. And 20 add 55 is 75. Okie dokie. So what is the best estimate of hitting the bullseye? Well, let's have a look at what we've got. We have, for Monday, we have 3 over 27. For Tuesday, we have 7 over 25. Uh, Wednesday, we have 5 over 31. Uh, 0 over 5 for Thursday. 8 over 28 for Friday. And then on the weekend, we have 20 hits out of 75, okay? So out of all of those, which one is the best? It's going to be this one, because it's happened more times. They've done 75 uh, uh, different tests in total, so that one would give you the best estimate out of these. However, what you could also do is add all of them up. So I'm going to use a calculator for this. So 3, add 7, add 5, add 8, add 20. It wasn't that bad, actually. So in total, there are 43 hits. And in total, it was tried 27 plus 25 plus 31 plus 5 plus 28 plus 75. Just double check those. Have I typed it in right? Yes, I have. Equals... 191 times. So the best estimate of hitting the bullseye using this table would be 43 out of 
191 for exactly the same reason we picked that one it's been done more times the more times you do something the better um, or the higher the accuracy of your experiment or your probability that you are doing okay so always 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 pick the value that has the highest amount of trials okay the uh, highest amount of times you've done something if you do that you'll always have the best estimate from the data you are using Okay, so hopefully that clears up a few things with relative frequency or just remind you of how you do it. So thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.